This video summarizes a modified procedure used to implant a total artificial heart in a patient with a history of congenitally corrected transposition of the great arteries, pulmonary atresia, and ventricular septal defect. In contrast to a normal heart, the anatomy of this patient's heart presented a challenge to TAH implantation as it is characterized by L-looped ventricles, a morphologic left ventricle on the right side and vice versa, as well as transposed great arteries, with the aorta anterior and leftward to the pulmonary artery. In patients with normally structured hearts, the TAH replaces the ventricles in a crisscrossed arrangement. For the patient with transposed arteries and inverted ventricles, the surgical plan included modification of the TAH such that the right and left pumps were implanted in a parallel orientation. The TAH successfully bridged the patient to heart transplantation five months after receiving the device, demonstrating that with technical modification, TAH is feasible even in patients with structurally abnormal hearts. The advantage of the total artificial heart is that, in fact, you take the entire heart out and you're placing a, a total artificial heart, unlike many of the mechanical devices that we have now, which actually help the heart while it's still in situ. Patients have tried to be supported with VADs or ventricular assist devices in the past. The problem being is that you have to continue the immune suppression. However, with the total artificial heart, you can take the whole heart out and stop the immune suppression. So I feel this would be a more successful way to bridge patients who have chronic rejection to heart transplant. Another advantage are there are certain congenital heart surgery patients or congenital heart patients who have multiple defects. It would be much easier to take out the whole heart and only do one procedure, which is the placement of the total artificial heart. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The cardiectomy began with standard preoperative patient preparation, followed by positioning, prepping, and draping in the normal sterile fashion for the repeat sternotomy. Upon completion of the repeat sternotomy, the extremely enlarged heart and severe adhesions were immediately noticeable. Following dissection of the diaphragmatic surface, the aorta, the right femoral vein, and the superior vena cava were dissected and cannulated. The patient was then placed on bicaval cardiopulmonary bypass. The inferior vena cava was dissected and the aorta was cross-clamped. This allowed complete decompression of the heart. The aorta and the main pulmonary artery were then divided. After dissecting the rest of the ventricular surface, the main pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery branch and the proximal pulmonary artery branches, the right ventricle was dissected out. Approximately 3 to 4 millimeters of muscle was left below the right atrioventricular valve. The left ventricle was then dissected out, leaving a 3 to 5 millimeter cuff of ventricular muscle below the left atrioventricular valve. Using a large proline on an MH needle, the previously prepared felt strip with Gore-Tex was whip-stitched to fortify the muscular rim of the ventricular muscle cuffs, and the atrial quick connect was trimmed to a 3 to 4 millimeter rim. It was inverted and sewn to the muscular cuff, both on the left and right sides, to prevent scalloping. The ventricles were tunneled out just left of the midline, and outflow grafts were cut to the appropriate size. Then, the aorta and pulmonary artery cuffs were sewn using running sutures before excising the right ventricle to pulmonary artery conduit and calcified areas. After the atrial cuffs were tested for leaks and the aorta and pulmonary artery anastomoses were tested under pressure, a driveline tunnel was created. The left TAH ventricle was then connected to the left atrial cuff and then to the aorta. Then, the outflow graft of the aorta was connected to the system 
and the cross clamp was released slowly. After this, the TAH right ventricle was connected to the atrial cuff of the right atrium and then to the pulmonary artery. In the final position, the TAH ventricles were aligned in a parallel fashion because the pulmonary artery graft did not cross over top of the aortic graft due to the TGA anatomy. Following complete attachment of the TAH device, the device was turned on. After achieving homeostasis, the patient was taken off cardiopulmonary bypass and four chest tubes were placed prior to closing the patient, as detailed in the text protocol. CT scans show CCTGA with L-looped ventricles and transposed great arteries in the axial view and the coronal view. In this case, the patient had severe aortic insufficiency and obstruction of a conduit between the left ventricle and pulmonary artery. The TAH was considered a better option than support with a temporary ventricular assist device, which would have required multiple concomitant surgical procedures. Previously, patients with malformed hearts were not considered candidates for receiving a TAH due to the challenges presented by the unusual anatomy. This video shows that with technical modification, the TAH can be successfully implanted in a patient with CCTGA. In this case, the right and left pumps are implanted in a parallel orientation instead of the typical crossed arrangement. The patient in this case report was able to return home and regain health and strength prior to being successfully bridged to heart transplantation five months after receiving the TAH. The reason we were able to discharge Jordan is because of the Freedom Driver, which is a new complement or driving system for the total artificial heart, which he can carry in a backpack or a satchel. And this allowed him to go home, and like all good Texans, he uh, even went hunting and fishing with this device while awaiting his transplant. He eventually, after being supported for approximately three months, came back and successfully had his transplant. And what was most noticeable is the different state of health that he was in when he came for his transplant. Um, his ability to rehabilitate, to gain weight, to gain muscle mass, was probably what was most noticeable by myself and the staff. So after the transplant, uh, which was successful, he was able to be discharged home and now is uh, starting college. And he has remained a member of our family here at Texas Children's Hospital, as well as part of the family of Syncardia, where he has become one of their spokesmen. My name is David Morales. I'm a congenital heart surgeon here at Texas Children's Hospital. Today I have the privilege of introducing Jordan Mareka, who was the first pediatric patient to receive a total artificial heart from a pediatric facility. This is in fact his one year anniversary from receiving that heart, which allowed him to be successfully bridged to transplant. So what was it like growing up with uh, a congenital heart defect? It was different in a lot of ways, but I led a normal life, really. Most of my friends didn't know until probably high school. Did you always think that you would have to have a heart transplant? Yes, sir. I mean, I always knew that I'd have to get one. I just didn't think it'd be this soon. Being connected to the machine was, felt like I was on a six foot leash Yeah. for a couple months. But then when, you know, when we introduced the Freedom Portable Driver, that must have been like a, a huge relief to you thinking yes. that you could actually walk around and have someone else following you. It was nice just to be able to walk outside without having to get my entourage. <laughs> uh, but I remember the first day we went out of the hospital. I know we were on our way uh, to get some coffee. But what did that feel like? Uh, it was hot. <laughs> I didn't believe y'all until I actually got to go outside. Yeah. But it was, it was really, really nice. Um, just to be able to 
be outside and not just look at it from outside my window. It seemed like when you were in the Freedom Driver, you, you, you started moving around more by yourself and being more independent. You can move around and do things on your own that you needed five or six people to help you with when you were when I was on the Big Blue. So, so then tell me, what was it like when you first left the hospital and went home? It was a good feeling. You started going fishing, I saw, and, and you did a little bit of shooting. I did go fishing and shooting. Yeah. What were you thinking when you first heard that we had a, a donor heart? In the beginning, I didn't believe y'all. <laughs> How relief. happy I was and just yeah. thanking God that it had finally come. I think that was a, a, a good day for everyone at Texas Children's Hospital. I'm here with Susan and Jeff Mareka, the parents of Jordan Mareka, and uh, we have some questions for you guys. I was just wondering, so what was it like for your family to have Jordan on the Syncardia Total Artificial Heart? You know, it, it, it was a, definitely a blessing. I mean, we, Jordan wouldn't be here today had uh, the uh, Syncardia not been implanted and uh, the ability to go home and kind of have a normal family again. Uh, that was, you know, from our perspective, that was, you know, the, the best part of, of the journey we were, we were on is, you know, after six months, seven months, having Jordan back at home. So. And do you remember our first conversation when, we, when I first introduced the idea of putting this device in? I remember you sitting down and showing us the device and beginning to talk about it and uh, thinking, wow, this is just an amazing piece of technology. What a wonderful thing to have here at Texas Children's. And I do remember in the back of my head thinking, this is wonderful, but I doubt we're going to need that. <laughs> He's on the top of the list. We've been here a long time now already, and surely a heart will come available and we won't need that technology. And the night of May uh, 21st, 21st, I believe, yeah. um, we were so thankful that that technology was available and that you were trained, that the Syncardia was here at Texas Children's ready to, you know, to be used and to, to save Jordan's life. And so it was truly a blessing. What did you feel like when you first saw him? The color that Jordan had, you know, that's the first thing I remember is that, you know, he had, you know, the normal color that... <laughs> life back in it. Yeah. He had gotten so sick before um, Syncardia that, um, you know, that was the other blessing of Syncardia is that it provided full blood flow instantly. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just allowed Jordan's body to heal. And so what do you think about uh, for Jordan in the future? August 27th is his first day of classes at A&M in Galveston. Oh, that's great. And uh, he's in the Maritime Systems Engineering Program. So we're excited about that, and he's excited about that. He's looking forward to that freedom. I'm excited for him, too. I'm sure we'll, we'll stay close friends for, for oh, a yes. long time. As long as texting is around. <laughs> yes, I'm sure yes. y'all will. <laughs> so what was it like to have the Total Artificial Heart uh, in terms of how your family reacted to it, not only you guys, but you know your friends and family? especially when you went home with the Freedom Driver. It didn't stop any of his friends from coming around. They would come <laughs> over and watch movies. And how about your sister? Was she nicer to you now? No. <laughs> no. no. And things had gotten back a little more normal now that you were at home. And so do you pick up his room more now? No. <laughs> no. Of course not. <laughs> the same Jordan. No. Why, why make your bed when you're just going to get back in it? <laughs> So it doesn't change the teenager. <laughs> oh, not at all. No, not <laughs> well, at all. Well, that's good. Well, it's great to see that you guys really have done so well. And, you know, as you know, you'll always be a part of our family here at Texas Children's. And that's been a another huge blessing in our life. And we wouldn't want to go back and relive anything, you know, that we went through during those eight months. But wouldn't want to change anything either because of the blessings that came out of it. So we are very thankful to Texas Children's and to you, Dr. Morales, and for all your love and support as well. We were very thankful. Yes. From the bottom of our heart. What's up? An amazing evening. Jordan, what would you say to another teenager who, you know, was being introduced to the idea or the potential of getting a total artificial heart? Obviously, you guys must have had so many questions. But, you know, what would you say to them if, if you could talk to them? It, it's worth it. Just, it, it might seem scary and like I don't know about this in the beginning but in the long run it, it's worth it. And how about you 
you guys, or to the parents, what would you say? To watch Jordan come from being so sick, and we knew, you know, his organs were, were suffering greatly, and what we experienced from March to May in that period, and then to um, be placed on Syncardia, and just to watch him get stronger and, um, you know, be able to do things again and um, on his own and for himself was just a true blessing. Watching how sick he got, you know, and knowing that, you know, how well he did with Syncardia, you know, and um, I think um, I would definitely had, uh, would like to have seen it, you know, if he could have done yeah. it, do it again, have it put in earlier. Put earlier. Yeah. I agree. I mean, and I think that's just because, you know, we saw the difference it made. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. 